Scottish author Robert Louis Stevenson's novel Master Ballantrae, A Winter's Tale explores the conflict between two brothers, Scottish nobles whose family is torn apart by the Jacobite Rising of 1745. The novel begins in 1745 and is presented as a memoir by Ephraim, McKellar, steward of the manor of Daristeer in Scotland. After Pretty Prince Charles raises the Stuart banner, the Dury family strategizes, James Dury, master of Ballantrae, joins the rebellion, and the younger Henry Dury sides with the loyalists. The rebellion failed and the master was declared dead, making Henry heir to the estate. At the urging of their father, the laird, the late master's fiancée marries Henry to restore the Dury fortune. Years pass and the townspeople look down on Henry for betraying the rebellion. His family treats him with total indifference, as his wife and his father spend their time mourning master. In April 1749, Colonel Francis Burke arrives, bringing with him letters from the master, who is still alive and living in France. At this point, the narrator weaves another storyline into the narrative, the memoirs of Colonel Burke, from which McKellar extracts sections on the master. From Burke's memoirs, it follows that the master was attached to the prince solely because of money and high position, and told the prince everything he wanted to hear in order to calm him down. When it began to look like the rebellion was doomed to fail, the master abandoned it and sailed to France with Burke, refusing to wait in case they could rescue the prince. However, the ship, old and unseaworthy, was commanded by an incompetent captain. After seven days of oblivion in bad weather, the ship was captured by pirates. A pirate captain who identified himself as Teach took Burke and the master aboard to join his pirate crew, before killing the rest of the ship's crew. In the end, the master managed to overthrow Teach, effectively becoming the new captain. He proved to be cruel and ruthless, taking over several ships and killing their entire crew so that they could not identify him. Eventually, he directs the ship to the North Carolina coast, where he abandons him and his crew, escaping with Burke and two accomplices, carrying all of the ship's treasures with him. During the escape, the master treacherously kills one of the accomplices and leaves the other for dead. Burke and the master board a merchant ship bound for Albany. They then travel to Canada, where they hope to find refuge among the French who supported the rebellion. They take a guide, an Indian merchant named Chu, with them, but he dies of a fever and the couple is hopelessly lost. Upon learning of his brother's adventures, Henry decides not to tell his parents about it. Instead, he continues to support his brother's mistress and send money to the master himself. The master accuses Henry of trying to steal his inheritance and insists that he send all the money directly to him. This puzzles Henry's family, but he doesn't tell them what he does with the money. By July 1756, the master was in trouble and was imprisoned in France. He informs his brother of his plans to escape to India, telling him that he will need money to do so, but Henry replies that the estate is used up. In November 1756, the master returns to Daristeer, calling himself Mr. Bally. He meets Henry on the way home and ominously says that he chose his fate by not agreeing to the master's plan to go to India. His father and his brother's wife, who was once his own fiancé, are overjoyed at his return after not seeing him for 11 years. Through deliberate manipulation, the master manages to turn the family against Henry, always blaming him and viciously abusing him, making it appear that Henry is abusing the master. In private, the master taunts Henry, pointing out that their father does not love him, that Henry's daughter prefers the master's company, and that despite the master's falsehood and crimes, he is everyone's favorite. Eventually, tensions come to a head and the brothers resort to a sword duel. Henry impales the master and he falls to the ground, seemingly dead. The master miraculously survives after being wounded by a sword and, with the money snatched from his father, goes to India to get rich. Henry takes his wife and children and leaves Scotland for New York, where Mrs. Dury has a family estate. Soon after, the master discovers the family's whereabouts and sails for New York, with McKellar in pursuit, hoping to alert Henry to his brother's arrival. When the master arrives in town, he again tries to turn the people against Henry. He asks his brother to provide him with money so he can go after the buried pirate treasure, but Henry refuses. Instead, he secretly arranges with a smuggler to assemble a team to introduce himself to the master, who wants to go with him in search of buried treasure. Their real purpose, unknown to the master, would be to kill him and steal the treasure. 
In the end, both brothers die and McKellar buries the two of them under the same rock. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.